So welcome everybody to episode six of the Trade Squad. We're so glad you're with us today. Uh, unfortunately, Leah could not join us, but Audrey, my co-host, is here. And we're also here with Radu. Radu, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's really late in Singapore and uh, you stayed up just for us. So let's get started. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Um. I'm, um, it, firstly, it's my pleasure to, to, to be here with you and thanks for the invitation and, uh, and no worries about the, no worries about the, the late uh, timing because um, it, it also keeps me engaged longer in the day. So that's, that's fine. Um, so my name is Rado Palamario. I'm Managing Director of Elcott Global Executive Search. So we, as the daily bread and butter activity, we work on recruitment and executive level searches across the world for the supply chain uh, domain. Um, so that cuts across manufacturing, cuts across logistics, it cuts across tech in supply chain, it cuts across e-commerce and so on. So there's the daily uh, daily activity. And then on the, on the side, we also have a consulting practice which uh, helps companies uh, more from, um, from an angle of, uh, of uh, projects and consultancy work. And then um, we, we do have one or two things on the content side as well, um, but I don't want to talk too much about that now. No, it's so, fine. I want to tell everybody. You're a fellow oh, okay. Final Master. Listen, I am all about collaboration, and there is enough to go around for everybody. So tell us about your podcast. All right, perfect. So, so my podcast is the second best podcast after Let's Talk Supply Chain. <laughs> um, it's, it's called Leaders in Supply Chain. And um, uh, yes, it's a, it's a global uh, rank, so make sure to follow uh, and to <laughs> to follow Sarah's first and mine second. And uh, and basically, we interview uh, we interview C-level uh, leaders within the industry across the globe. So um, I literally had a, a marathon today where I had the chief procurement officer of Schneider Electric in the morning, and then I had the chief procurement the chief supply chain officer of um, Novo Nordisk in the afternoon. And the funny part was that they knew each other. And the gentleman was in Hong Kong and he texted uh, Suzanne from Novo Nordisk in Denmark. And by the time she woke up, she got the message and she was like wondering, oh my God, did I already record the podcast? How did Dan know that I was coming on the podcast? I didn't tell anybody. So that was kind of a funny, that's, uh, funny that's side a little, story. That's a little bit of a shock to wake up to, eh? <laughs> yeah. And we do live in the world of artificial intelligence where you can actually fake a lot of things. So I think she was a bit scared that, <laughs> that something has leaked, but all in good spirit. So that's yeah, we do. We, we do. Uh, we are um, uh, fellow podcasters as well. Awesome. That's a great story. And uh, yeah, I encourage everybody to check that out as well. All right. Well, let's get down to the discussion today. We're going to start with uh, a topic that's kind of come up for me in the last couple of weeks around conferences. So a lot of times, you know, we go to conferences, there's keynote speakers, there's panels, there's fireside chats, there's debates. They're called I find that they're called all sorts of things, and really it's just around discussion. And so some people really like panels, some people really like fireside chats, but I wanna know from you guys, what do you think? You know, what's a good conference to you? Is it made up of panel discussions where you get a lot of different thoughts? Is it fireside chats where it's a little bit more intimate? Is it a debate where we really, you know, go after each other? Or is it the keynote speakers? I like a mix. Okay. I have that attention span. I like a mix. I like, you know, to kind of have, you know, it's always kind of nice to have that inspirational keynote kickoff and then, and then move into, you know, in the morning you can kind of take the panels because there's, usually a few people on the panels and they're getting into nitty gritty and, you know, and then by the afternoon, you're kind of, I want that fireside chat where you're getting people who are giving you kind of juicy gossip or the inside scoop. That's kind of how I look at it. Or you want more comfy chairs after lunch or the fireside chat. <laughs> Especially if you're, if you're on the panel, this is my first year ever really being on a panel. So, you know, I could say that panels are the best cause I was on one this year, but yeah, I, you know, to trying to think of the perspective of an audience member. And every time I've gone to conferences, I like to have the mix. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you were saying like, it's kind of people, conference organizers are really taking it to, you know, either pick one or the other. 
Yeah, and I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. What do you think, yeah. Radu? Um, I'll present the perspective from Asia because I've been attending most of the conferences this year in Asia and one or two in Europe. Um, I have yet to come to the States for a conference, which I need to book mm. in my agenda for next year. I would, I would, I would say that a combination would probably work best. Uh, but then again, what I find most useful is when people, no matter the format, really get really practical, keep it real. Yeah. Yeah. and um, give examples and I mean, when for me being engaging means you know there's too many of these conferences that are basically a sales pitch and um, whether you present your own transformation success story case whatever you, you want right but okay fair enough it, it should be successful right because that's why you're talking about it because hopefully people should learn from it but I feel that a lot of times people forget to keep it real. They oversell it, basically. They don't talk about the challenges. They don't keep it real. Um, everything is over -gla glamorous in terms of how easy it was for them to pull it off, which, which is really never the case. So I think mm -hmm. that element of where I've seen really good presentations, again, no matter the format, whether it is a fireside chat or a keynote presentation or a, or a panel, is where people really gave... Uh, examples of what they experienced pluses minuses struggles challenges successes and kept it really much um, tangible so that people can take away integrate and then and then go back and hopefully apply something in their day-to-day -day life yeah. so i would i would i'm a big fan of of that which is more of a tactical way of doing it in general but i, I would say that every conference should have an element um especially in today's world of collaboration or sharing or roundtable discussions or something where more of the audience or all of the audience is involved in some way, shape or form during the day. I mean, it should be at least one or two of these sessions and then they can share the ideas on the roundtable and then can come up and maybe break into smaller groups. I think that's important as well, not just listening, but also getting engaged at some point of the conference because otherwise, Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how active you are, and I think we live in an ADHD and attention deficit disorder type of a world, it's impossible that you're going to concentrate for the whole day. I mean, I just don't yeah. believe that. So yeah. um, you're going to fall asleep after lunch, no matter how comfortable, <laughs> yeah. how comfortable the chair is. So I would put that as a, as a, a big must in any conference. Yeah. Well, I also think that, I mean, uh, um, the moderator makes moderator. the difference, right? <laughs> <laughs> I moderate a lot of panels, and uh, I do think, I mean, regardless of what I do, but I, I do think that moderators make the difference, whether it's a fireside chat, whether it's a debate, whether it's a panel. Um, I think they make the difference, right? They're the ones that are, that are bringing the energy to start with, and it sort of flows through the panelists so that they know the energy to sort of keep up with and make sure that, you know, you're all sort of on that same level and engaging everybody. So during my research on this, I read a great article by Reed Hoffman on LinkedIn. And the title was, Why Panels Suck. <laughs> it's from July 2017, so it's a little bit old, but I thought it was great. Um, one of the quotes in it by David Hornick says, in a great conference, the conversation in the lobby is the content. Mm. So he doesn't even consider what's on the stage as the content. It's actually the networking parts of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I throw it out there to you guys. Do you think that we need maybe more networking at a conference rather than content? No, I like to, I like to add this idea though because I haven't been to a conference lately that has done kind of um, I don't know I guess they do roundtables but yeah yeah that roundtable where it's like you're getting the the feedback so it's it's networking in one sense but it's also you know like you and I were both at uh, the JOC in Vegas and you were you know you've also been to a couple in Long Beach and 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 a lot of the feedback that's coming out of these conferences is that especially in, in supply chain or in, in shipping and, and transportation or in you know, the movement of goods, there's, there, we're really at a, a, a point where there's so much technology coming in and there's so many new companies coming up with technology and there's so many kind of old traditional models of moving transportation and there's so many hiccups in supply chain with you know, kind of new international rules and new international routes and trade deals 
you know, we're all kind of in this weird transition space and it's not clear yet where we're going. So things like a round table to really get feedback, you know, on, 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 on what my actual day-to-day problems are. Yes, there's the future. Yes, there's all this technology coming in. Yes. But, you know, ultimately I'm trying to service a customer. I'm trying to do something to, while my customers or keep my customers happy, you know, coming together to really figure out what those are because you do see so many, oh, this is a great idea for this technology. This is a great idea for this. And it's sometimes, you know, as Rudy was mentioning, it's not like tangible. It's I can't take it away. I can't use it. I can't, it's not helping me make a decision on, what provider I might need to, to utilize or, or what relationship I might need to build. So I think maybe, especially in the next moving into 2020, yeah, that, you know, having the round table or having more of a, maybe a, a specific type of networking, like, you know, I've seen people do speed, like a speed dating style networking, right. Where you're more one-on-one, less random. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that would really, kind of really get the ideas, right? Really get people's feedback and ideas in, in a bit more of a organized way as opposed to just all of our, you know, talk in the, in the hallway. But now, Radu, what do you think? Um, a, bit, a bit of both. Uh, I mean, uh, networking is definitely good, but um, you can also go for beers and, I mean, you can organize beers and... <laughs> No need for conferences, right? I mean, there it is. <laughs> There's true. You just go off for a booze cruise, right? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about booze cruises with AJ a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't want to give further ideas from what's happening in Asia. I don't think it's that different the industry across the continents. But yeah, um, uh, I, I'm I'm a big believer in in engagement, and I'm a big big believer in. Um, I've been a moderator on in different conferences, and again, the level of engagement goes up the moment that people in the audience g- are given a voice and they can ask questions. And of course, if you have 200 people in the audience now, it's very difficult that you will capture so much because you only have that much time, so you probably can yes. take three, four questions. But if you manage to break it up a bit, and of course, the session should be a little bit smaller. I think it, the energy transforms a lot, and that that feedback uh, and anyway, I mean, the networking anyways happens at the table, and then if you resonate with somebody, of course, you will talk after the session anyways. Um, but on top of that, you also get if you do it properly, and and again, uh, to to your point, Sarah, if you have a good moderate, does it does it properly you need a simple process in place you collect also the data you get everybody to share i think everybody benefits much more so i think that's an element that is missing i haven't seen so much in conferences i have been to one that has been extremely well organized and i give them publicly credit for that um it's gardener event in barcelona earlier this year that i went to and they're doing really well a combination of all of it so they have keynotes which are meant to be one general sharing and usually is their best content and material there if it's a gardener analyst or they have really good speakers and that they're, they're meant to be motivational right and give you some inspiration which again works well and i think it's practical things that you can take but then there's as you may know there's a lot of breakup sessions there's basically the purpose for every breakup session is for the presentation to be extremely practical right. i think they even vetted before it's an example of where the company has actually implemented something, lessons learned and all of that. So it's extremely valuable. And they have also sessions where they, they break you uh, into groups and there's, there's a bit of sharing from, from Garden or from somebody else in terms of some of their findings, but then they let you discuss it. So mm-hmm. that's, and that's also plenty of networking. So the, in, in terms of the way of organizing, that's the better one that I've ever been because it kind of combines everything in one. Yeah, and going back to the round tables, I was at, uh, I can't remember which event I was at, but they um, they put together round tables with a thought leader from each component. Mm-hmm. And so the attendees were able to pick which table they wanted to go to. Oh, yeah. And I think they were even able to switch the tables um, after a certain amount of time. So if you are looking for something specific and you can sit down at a table with uh, not only the thought leader, but peers in your group that are looking for the answers for the same thing, it really turned out to, to be some really good discussion. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely, I, I'm on board with that. I would encourage conferences in 2020 to definitely take a look at that. Um, so in the research, I'm just going to end with this. 
He said, three ways to make panels better is to turn them into structured debates instead of agreeable dialogue. Mm -hmm. So participants should be given specific and unique questions, eliminating repetitive answers. They should be discouraged from chiming in when other answers, unless they have an opposing or contrasting point. And at the close, the audience should vote on who they most, um, who they found the most persuasive with the <laughs> ants. So that gets to your audience point where you get the audience, you know, engaged at the end to really say, you know, who was the one that gave them the most, maybe the most practical, maybe not, not the most per persuasive. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, who gave them the most practical and uh, that kind of stuff. So that was just some some uh, thoughts on his side. Mm -hmm. He was also saying that to make things better from a conference perspective is the storytelling aspect. Mm -hmm. So not only just talking about the concept, talking about the different things that, that uh, are brought up in the panels or even the fireside chats, but to turn them into storytelling opportunities. And like you said, Radu, right, is that, you know, you're talking about specific challenges that you had practical ways that you w were able to overcome them and I think that that's really where people are going to be able to learn.